Welcome to the fifth lecture. Okay, we are going to talk about some specific examples of unit cells. Then we are going to look at packing efficiency and holes. Um, the four unit cells we're going to look at are the simple cubic, the body-centered cubic, the face-centered cubic, and hexagonal closest packing. Uh, that last one might seem to be a little bit different, but you'll uh, uh, hopefully you'll you'll be able to see that it is uh, closely related to face-centered cubic. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, before uh, we actually look at what the pictures are, uh, let's move on to this our next slide: uh, packing efficiency and holes. Um, packing efficiency refers to how much space uh, is filled up inside of a particular unit cell. Okay. Uh, atoms or ions are spherical, roughly spherical. Um, uh, they, they, they actually are, a sphere is a very, very good approximation of the shape of an atom. Um, so the thing is, uh, it's impossible to pack spheres together into a space with perfect efficiency. Uh, no matter how uh, how you arrange them, there's always going to be empty space. Okay, so if you look at this, you know, a grid uh, uh, filled with circles, um, if you pack them, you know, rather straightforwardly like this, you'll see that there is uh, a heck of a lot of empty space, uh, sort of as at, at each corner, as it were. Um, you can pack them a little bit more efficiently if you do it like this, so that each row is sort of nested into uh, the space in between two circles in the previous row, but nevertheless, uh, there's still empty space left over. There's no way to pack circles together with perfect efficiency. So there's always going to be holes uh, left over. Okay? And um, those holes are called uh, tetrahedral holes and octahedral holes. Uh, reflecting on it, I don't want to go into too much detail there. Uh, this three-dimensional thinking is, is rough enough without asking you to look at an empty space and then count uh, the things around it. But a tetrahedral hole uh, has four atoms nearby. An octahedral hole has six. Um, so if you were to imagine the hole as the center of a shape and the atoms nearby as the uh, 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 points, sort of like when you look, did molecular geometry, then a tetrahedral hole is the center of a tetrahedron, an octahedral hole is the center of an octahedron, you know, with four atoms or six atoms nearby. Um, but like I said, I don't want to go into too much detail there. Just uh, remember that no matter how, 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 how tightly packed uh, these structures are. There's always going to be gaps. There's always going to be empty spaces in there. And one of the things material scientists do um, is they, they, they look at what happens when you put different materials in those gaps. Um, and you can get some really interesting results. And that is why um, a good knowledge of geometry is very helpful to, for example, semiconductor science or um, uh, constructing new uh, materials with interesting properties in materials science. All right, so having discussed that, let's go ahead and look at the simple cubic cell. And here we have our simple cubic structure. You can see there is one sphere at each corner. That's it. Now, to find the packing efficiency, you need to divide the volume of all the atoms inside the cube by the total volume of the cube. Okay. So you need to find the number of atoms inside the cube multiplied by the volume per atom um, divided by the total volume of the cell. Uh, so if each atom is a sphere of radius r, and the volume per atom is just four-thirds pi r cubed. Okay. That's just the volume of the sphere. And the volume of the cube, if the cube has an edge length of L, is just L cubed, the volume of a cube. So the next thing 
we have to do is find hopefully a relationship between the edge length of the cell and the radius of the sphere so that we can get rid of all those letters and just be left with an actual packing efficiency in terms of a percentage. And for the simple cubic cell, this is nice and simple. Okay? Uh, the spheres at each corner are just touching one another. Okay? Each sphere has a radius r, uh, and the edge length is l. And so we go from corner to center to corner. That's 2r. So l equals 2r. Okay? Boom. Awesome. The next thing we have to do is find the total number of atoms inside the cell. Well, there's a sphere at each corner. Um, there are a total of eight corners. Uh, if a sphere located at a corner contributes uh, one-eighth of an atom uh, to the interior of the cell. So eight corners times one-eighth atom per corner is one atom. So even though they're located at the corners of the cell, um, there's a total of one atom inside that cell in a honking big empty space in the middle. Um, so when we do the mathematical equation that gives us uh, the packing efficiency is one for one atom times four thirds pi r cubed, that's the volume of each atom, uh, divided by uh, 2r cubed. Okay, so 2r is just the, 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 um, the, the, the edge length of the cube is 2r. So cube, take the cube of that, which means we have 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by 8r cubed. Uh, then we start simplifying. The, the, the r cubed uh, is gone. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how big each atom is, so long as they're all the same size. Any uh, uh, substance with a simple cubic structure, any element, I should say, with a simple cubic structure, um, is going to have the same packing efficiency. Uh, the 8 and the 4 cancel out, leaving a 2 on the bottom. So our packing efficiency is pi over 6, or roughly 52%. Um, that is horrible. Uh, <laughs> okay, a, a simple cubic structure is almost as much empty space as it is stuff. Um, so 52%, uh, it's not all that much. Uh, a lot of things are, are, are packed uh, more tightly than that. So let us look at uh, something that is slightly more efficient, namely body-centered cubic. Now, I hope you don't mind that I'm going to go a little bit faster through this one. I've tried to draw the body-centered cubic, uh, one atom in the middle, one at each corner, uh, to be clear, but not necessarily accurate. We need to find the uh, relationship between L and R, just like last time. It's not obvious from this picture, but uh, the atoms at the corner the corners are no longer touching one another. Instead, each corner is touching the atom at the middle. Okay. So the line uh, where, you know, radius to radius to radius, you know, and so on, uh, that goes across the atom uh, runs from this corner to this corner down here. Okay. Opposite corners of the cube, the longest possible distance inside the cube. Um, again, it's not that easy to see, and I apologize, this is messy, but um, that line is four radiuses, okay? Uh, from that corner sphere, uh, the center of that corner sphere is at the corner. So uh, from corner to edge, from edge to center, uh, from center to edge, and then from edge back to the opposite corner is a total of 4R. Now we just need to find a way to uh, relate that long line to one of the, to, to, to the edge of the cube. Um, to do that, we're going to need to take advantage of uh, Pythagorean theorem and this line down here on the bottom. Um, that orange line, uh, uh, let's just go ahead and call it X, and uh, we'll have uh, these edge lengths L, okay, this side here, this edge down at the bottom, and this edge over here. Okay, so 
Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so let's find the length of that line x, the orange line at the bottom. x squared equals l squared plus l squared. So that's 2l squared. Okay, now that uh, green line, 4r, okay, we take the square of that, is going to be l squared, uh, that line over the side, plus x squared, or um, uh, l squared plus 2l squared. So 16r squared equals uh, 3l squared. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's that's nasty. Okay, so let's just go ahead and rearrange this, solve for L. So we flip it around, we do a little bit of division, we get L squared equals 16R squared over 3, or L is equal to uh, 4R over the square root of 3. Um, you, you, you may remember you're not supposed to have a, a square root on the bottom. I'm going to leave it there because it'll be easier in the long run. All right, now we need to count our atoms. Uh, one atom inside, and one at each corner. Okay, so eight corners times one-eighth atom per corner gives us one atom. Uh, one atom inside times 100% um, is equal to one atom. One atom plus one atom is two atoms. Okay, so a body-centered cubic cell has uh, two atoms inside of it. Okay. All right, so... Let's do our packing efficiency math. The number of atoms, 2 times the volume per atom, that's 4 thirds pi r cubed, uh, divided by the volume of the cell, uh, that's L cubed. Of course, L is um, uh, 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 4r over the square root of 3. And we take the cube of that. That means we're looking at 8 thirds pi r cubed divided by 64r cubed over the square root of 3. That looks god-awful, I know, but things start canceling out right away. First off, we lose the r. No more r cubed. Excellent. Uh, next, fairly uh, 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 excellent, is that we lose the 8. The 64 becomes 8. You know, 8 over 64 is just 1 eighth. Um, next, we lose the thirds, the 1 third, so 8 thirds. Okay, that three disappears, and the other three down at the bottom of the bottom disappears. Um, and then, uh, you know, divide by one half is multiplying by two, right? So divide by one over the square root of three is equal to multiplying by the square root of three. Or to put it another way, that square root of three comes up to the top. I told you there was a good reason to leave it on the bottom and not try to rationalize that fraction. Okay, so what was a nasty confluence of numbers and ugliness has become pi root 3 over 8, or roughly 68%. Um, I, I know I tore through that math really, really fast, but uh, um, it's, it's, it, it's not too important. Uh, I mean, it would help, you know, if you're good at geometry, um, and Pythagorean theorem and so on. It, it would be helpful if you can do this sort of thing on your own rather than trying to memorize, you know, simple cubic is 52%, body center cubic is 68%, okay? I mean, you can do that if you really want, but you don't have to if you can work this out for yourself. Um, it, it only takes a couple of minutes uh, when you know what you're doing. Okay. Uh, still, we can compare body center cubic and simple cubic, and we see that 52% versus 68% uh, BCC is a lot more efficient, but it is not yet perfect. So uh, we will now move on to uh, the closest packing. That's face-centered cubic, also known as cubic closest packing, and hexagonal closest packing.